Hello everyone, I'm April Sproul and I'm a tax law artist living in Northern California. My friend Maggie Simpson and I are both on the planning committee for an event we hold each year here in Northern California and it's called the Focus on Fiber Virtual Exhibit for 2021. So as this is the first time we're doing a virtual exhibit, we wanted to share some photography tips um, with all of you and I hope it makes your entry submission much easier for you to tackle. So neither one of us are professional photographers but we've learned a lot throughout the years on how to photograph our own work and to use those photos for online entry submission. So a couple of the things that we're going to cover will be the lighting, the editing, and the online submission of your entry form. So I hope you find this helpful. Thank you. So I would recommend that you use whatever you have on hand. If you have a camera, a digital camera, use that. You'll get a lot more detail. Or if you just have a phone, a smartphone, you can also use that as well. Natural light is often the easiest and the best way to photograph your fiber art. So what I like to do is early in the morning before I have direct sunlight, I put my piece in front of a window and place it at a 90 degree angle to the light so you're getting the best light distribution. So that piece on the back side on the right is another piece of foam core I use to bounce the light off and distribute it evenly. Then all I need is a step ladder or a ladder so that I can get far enough above my work to photograph it flat and get a nice straight view of it. Here I just wanted to show you that sometimes I will photograph a piece on a white background and then sometimes on a darker background because the camera will pick up the, the colors in a different way. So here's a great example of what what a difference the natural light can make. So you can see the left piece was done flat on the wall and the right was done with the natural light. And the next piece is exactly the same. The piece on the left was done on the wall, flat on the wall, and then the next piece is done with natural lighting. Now I will show you what I use for my simple studio lighting. And all I use is a 20 watt LED bulb in these clamp on lights. You could clamp it on a chair or a ladder, whatever you need and then I put a piece of tissue paper over the top, which diffuses the light and works really well, and I don't have to worry about any bulky um, light diffusers. And um, I can throw the tissue paper away when I'm done. So here's the setup. I have overhead light. I have um, the lights on each side in kind of midway in between, so I'm filling in all the areas. And then underneath, if you look on top of my stool, I have my favorite piece of foam core again. And that's deflecting the light, so it's evenly lit on all four sides. So I'd really like to encourage you to play around with the settings on your camera. As I said, I am not a professional photographer. I'm not even a good photographer. And so um, this first photo was taken on the auto setting on my DSLR, and that is... Um, with a flash. So you don't want flash on textiles very often because it just um, flattens everything out and makes it look really dull and not very interesting. And next I have um, a photo taken on a manual setting on my camera which totally threw all the color out of whack and um, that is not what I want at all. The third photo is with um, the same exact lighting but no flash. And then the last image is a close-up shot. All right, now we're finally getting up to the editing. So first we need to talk about photographing your work and keeping your camera on the same level or plane as the object that you're photographing. So you don't want to tilt your camera from side to side or um, back away from your piece or tilted too far forward because this is what you will get. So next I'm going to show you how to correct that and um, get your piece nice and straight, whether it's a square or a rectangle, and uh, we will fix that problem. 
Now I will edit these photos on my iPad, which is by far the easiest way to do it. So here is my workflow, and I pretty much follow the same workflow, whether I'm doing this on my iPad or on my computer in Photoshop. But I straighten my photos, I crop them, then I adjust the color and the lighting, I resize them if I need to, and then I save my image. So first, let's fix those last two images that we saw that were so crooked. So what I'm going to do now is straighten them. And I'm going to start by going to the Edit tool and then Crop and Straighten. And so these are the straighten tools on the right-hand side. And you can see that I'm adjusting all the problems here. I'm straightening it from top to bottom. I want to get at least the top and the bottom straight, and then the sides, or vice versa, whichever is easiest. And then as I get it as straight as I can, playing with these controls, then I can go on to my cropping. So I go back to my crop tool, which I can't see right now. And all I'm doing is grabbing those little tabs on each corner, those little white marks, and I'm dragging those in. And so I just get as close to the edge as possible. And it's not letting me go up any higher because it's at an angle up there. So now we have the second image and it is way larger on the top than on the bottom. And so again, we're going to go to the crop tool And then I usually start with the worst angles first, so the sides are way off. The, actually, the top and the bottom are pretty even. They're pretty parallel on this piece. So it's mostly the sides. So I'm just going up and down on that little slider on the right-hand side. And now I'm ready to crop. So I'm dragging my corners in. I'm getting rid of that pole on the top. I'm getting as close as I possibly can to the edge and there it is finished and I can hit done and um, save my image. Now I want to go back and edit one of my photos I took earlier with my phone and all I'm doing is selecting my photo on my iPad going to edit and now I'm editing my piece so I'm going to um, crop it first. So you can see those stitch marks around the outside. Those are just basting lines. So I want to crop those out. They're sort of ugly. And this piece needs some um, adjustments here. You can always check that little wand at the top as the auto adjustment. And I hardly ever use that. So um, I usually brighten my pieces up. And so I will lighten it, and then I'll use the contrast. You can go through all of these and play with them, see what you think it needs. And there's the contrast. And that can make a big difference. That can, that can make your piece pop quite a bit more. But you always want to make sure you're not distorting the color and pumping it up too much. If anyone ever wanted to buy it, um, they might be disappointed if it didn't look anything like the photo that they saw online. So um, here I'm going to adjust the tint a little bit because that linen in the background is actually a really light bluish green. And it's hard to tell that. You can see how it's going from red. See how pink it is in the top there? And then if I go down further, it goes more to the blues. So I don't want the whole bird turning a bluish green. So I'm just going to leave it at that. So I'm going to play with it just a little bit more. So then all I need to do is hit done when I'm finished with my editing. And then I can save it. It's already saved on my iPad. And if I hit that little box with the arrow pointing up on the top, then um, this screen will pop up. I can select my photo. And then I can email it to myself or send it in whichever way I want. So I'm on the pixelator.com website, and I'm going to choose between these two versions. You don't have to set up an account or anything, which is really nice with this site. 
So all I'm going to do is say, go down here to my left and say, open an image. And here's the image I want to work on, open. So I want a high resolution version of this file. And so I'm gonna choose full high definition and I'm going to put the new size at 2000, okay? And hit apply. So it's a little bit higher resolution. So there's my image, it opened in the work pane and I'm going to unlock that image. So the first thing I always want to do is going back to our um, workflow is to straighten it. And I don't need to straighten this piece, but I do need to crop it because I don't want the white showing around the outside. So all I do is grab my corners and drag them in diagonally until I don't have any of the background showing. And now I can hit enter and it crops it for me. So now I can go adjust and filter if it doesn't pop up, you might check over here and make sure your layer is selected. This is just a zoom function here, so you can zoom in or out. And this is the layer, so you want to make sure you're working on this layer. So now you can go to color and adjust your color, but I'm happy with the color, but I'm, I'm not too happy with the light. It looks pretty dark because this is a pretty dark piece. So first I'm gonna do my exposure. So I'm gonna bring everything up to where it's quite a bit lighter. And then next, um, brightness is fine since I increased the, ex the exposure. So now I can do the contrast. So I'm increasing my contrast and that looks pretty good, okay. So now I can go down to the only thing I actually really need to do here now is to um, sharpen this image a bit. So I'm going to sharpen it. You want to be careful about sharpening your image too much. I'll show you what it looks like if you over sharpen it. Can you see that? See how grainy it's getting? So I'll go back down to where it was when I started. So one function that I like more than sharpen is clarity because that doesn't happen so much with clarity. And now I can hit apply right here. Turn off all the ads, which you will get because it's a free version. Okay. And so now I'm actually done editing. You can spend all the time you want here. Now I can change um, my file name so that it saves a copy and doesn't edit the original one. Okay, and here, so I've changed that name and here I'm saving it as a JPEG and I want my quality to be high. I'm gonna increase that all the way up to 100%. But what happened is if you look down here, here it says format and JPEG is my file type. And the total size of this file now is 7.7 .7 megabytes. So I'm entering a show and um, my image has to be five megabytes or smaller. So I can just go down with the quality here or I could change the size here to um, decrease that. So I have it at four megabytes now, which is sufficient for my needs. And now I'm going to download it back to my computer. And then I can just do save. And close, okay? So here we are at the end of our our tutorial and this is the entry form for the event and um, this will be modified a little bit it will have the information about the file size and type so your file needs to be under five megabytes in size and the file format the type of um, photo that you need is a JPEG so you can go through fill out all your personal information um, the title of your piece 
height, width, and information there. And then all you need is to select your file, wherever you have your files stored on your device, whether it's your phone or your computer. And you can drag and drop. If you're doing it on your phone or iPad, you can do um, copy and paste. So just copy that and then paste it into here. So I wanted to show you one more thing. If you try to download a file that's too big, you'll get this error message right here. Also, if you try to download the wrong file type, you'll get another error message that informs you of that. So um, that file is twice the size of what, it, so it was over 10 megabytes when I just tried to download. So now I can go back pick another one that's the right size. So see it's editing JPEG and then my, that's a teeny tiny file. Um, so it accepted that one. Then you can enter up to three pieces, scroll through, do the same exact thing for every piece that you want to enter. And um, then you go through here, pick the number, number of entries and hit submit you are done. So thank you very, very much for watching this tutorial. I hope that you found it helpful and we hope to see your artwork in our exhibit. Goodbye.